All right, everyone. I am super excited this week. As always, we do not disappoint because we have a phenomenal guest today. Um, outside of just being like my big brother, just super dynamic, brilliant, bold, hilarious. Um, y'all are welcome in advance for me allowing you to introduce you to him because y'all know I'd be keeping all the gems to myself. But on today, I am going to share and I'm so excited to just pass the mic uh, to, to Harka Willie Blue. Um, you all are going to be super, super blessed. I hope you get some laughs in and I hope you, if you're not driving, have a pencil and paper ready because we're just gonna just dive deep and keep it real. So with that said, would you like to just introduce yourself? No one can do it better than you telling people about you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass the mic and just share with <laughs> people, you know, who you are. Man, oh God, that uh, you you did it well. Thank you. I, first and foremost, I appreciate you just having me on here and even thinking of me to talk to me. Um, but as you mentioned, my name is Tarka Willie Blue, uh, Detroit native, born and raised East Side. If you didn't yes. know, <laughs> uh, but now living in Houston, Texas. Uh, graduate of Oakland University, member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, um, a husband of nearly 15 years now, which I'm really excited to say. I've been in the game a while. Uh, three beautiful children. Uh, my oldest son, Khalil, is uh, 13. My middle son, Aiden, is 11. And my daughter, Layla, will be seven in a matter of days. So uh, she's like seven going on 17. But, um, oh, it is. you know, I'm a, I'm a father. Um, Professionally, I'm a creative director, um, and I love who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm at that age in life. I'm 41, and I'm at that point in life where I like me a lot. That's great. <laughs> like I, re I like who I am. I like what I stand for. I like what I represent, how I represent, um, and it is a very, it's a liberating state. I've, I've shown people what I can do. Mm -hmm. Now in life, it's just a matter of being who I am. So yeah. I'm enjoying that. That's great. I love that you're at that juncture in your life because some people don't achieve it. And that's, I mean, and I don't say that to be funny. I'm just being very real. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a lot of self work and self awareness to get to that place where you're like, I like me. I it is. Me. I know me. I'm yeah. It, 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 it's, it's so, I mean, liberating is the best word I can say. And it's yeah. funny because I don't know if you saw uh, Kevin Hart stand up uh i give zero f's yeah. but literally like i had been saying that for like a year and not in a negative standpoint but right. just i'm not trying to prove myself to anybody now yeah and don't yeah. get me wrong i don't think i'm the greatest in the world and i got it all figured out mm -hmm. but there's this comfort in knowing what god has for me is for me mm -hmm. knowing you know how i've been reared is at least in the right direction Right. And the things that I'm trying to do are naturally righteous. Yes, yes. The things yes. that are righteous can't be wrong. Even if you mess up a little bit, right. you're going down the path you need to go to. So I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm really excited every birthday now with Listen. who I am. Listen, I am getting there, but I'm not like far back. It's, yeah. it's, I think it's just one, I think as birthdays occur, you're just like, where, where am I? We're good? We're good? Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, I, I come back to there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's, it's humbling, but that's a good place. It's like a humby, humble, happy space. Yeah, absolutely. Like grateful to be here, haven't arrived, but wow, this is fun. You know? And what, and what is arriving though, right? Arriving, Big as soon thing. as you arrive, it's going to change. Absolutely. <laughs> so what are we arriving to? That's the whole fact. I'm going to put it <laughs> in that. I'm sure we'll revisit it because that's that's the truth. Yeah. Um, if only it was a straight line. Um, be a whole nother life. Uh, okay, so you said a lot of great things. I I'm put some pins in like two things that I'll come back to. One mm -hmm. of the things was you talked about your creative director. And yes. I'm curious, um, I know a lot of the times we lean into, and first of all, thank you for sharing. I think a lot of the times when we're asked, like, tell me about yourself, we lean heavy into profession first. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Correct. Um, and I know, I, and for you, you kind of gave us a full 60, so I appreciate that. And I'm curious to know, even as you were talking about you being a creative director, um, mm -hmm. do you feel that that is, and let, let me pause, I want to say this, mm -hmm. that's your profession. What yeah. is your purpose work or are they the same? Um, <laughs> for the longest time, I thought they were the same. Okay. So, you know, the, the goal I had was 
getting to this space of creative director and yeah. and and that's still uh, you know a work in progress it's not you know i'm not like nationally known or anything but i i work in that space um and god put me there but i thought that was my purpose mm -hmm. as i get to you know this this place we're talking about about being who i am yeah. i'm realizing how that's not necessarily my purpose my purpose i'm a conduit okay and, and and what i mean by that is i am i i like to um put people together mm. that, that's what i enjoy i love being that person that someone looks at that could then connects them to something else yeah you know I'm, I, I don't have to be the um you know the guy in the front i like being the guy in the back you know i, I pull some of the strings and i connect relationships i connect ideas and so in a sense my my profession allows me to do that yeah because oh. you as you know you as a business owner when you with your podcast if we're working on a project you know i'm not standing in the front holding a sign hey i did this you know it's it's a matter of making connection for you creatively whatever that idea is how do i bring it to life to further your business or further your goals um you know for whenever i'm working with various clients that's what it's about um bringing their ideas to life and being that connector and then outside of the space of creative as an individual yeah. me meeting people and connecting with people is so much bigger than you know i don't care about what you do professionally no more i right i, I don't need I, that's not the thing who are you right and what right. you do professionally to your point might not even be your purpose so how do we get to your purpose and what can i do in your life to help bring that to life i love that so like a purposeful and intentional dot connector, which is yes. a very visionary role because you have to have foresight and um, a high level perspective to see, to intentionally see like vision and when dots need to be connected. Like that's not a random thing that you go after. You have to like see it and have the foresight yes. and vision to, to see that. And I think that's awesome. And to your point, yeah, it wasn't until probably like in the last, two three years that i understood that difference like i knew there was a difference from pr purpose and profession i yeah. thought that it was this i thought that i was supposed to be on this journey to find out when my profession was going to turn into my purpose like this is not the right role but one day i'll have the right position that will be my purpose and then i had to learn like no nah, those are two different things you know well, then i think your profession can allow you the opportunity to do purposeful work but yeah yeah, and, and that's the thing. I, I think they, and literally, as I'm even as we're having this conversation, I'm seeing how, like you said, having that vision to be able to see the dots. Mm -hmm. As a creative director, that's my job. Yeah. When I'm working with designers and cinematographers and photographers, it's like, okay, how do I, how do I put you in the right place and connect those dots so that we get this vision across? And that's the same thing outside of my nine to five. It's like, okay, how do we, how do we see that? So I guess my, my purpose yeah fuels my profession yes and vice versa <laughs> yeah that's a good way to say it your purpose fuels your profession and I, and I, the reason why i say that specifically um is because i think that's when the burnout like the holistic burnout not just work but the spiritual yeah. burnout the emotional is when you just feel like you're doing a profession that has no fuel because it's just right. something you go to it's right, not right. You're like, oh, this is me without this organization or this title. This is me al already. Right. So if I'm, a, I'm going to connect these dots. I'm going to be a visionary person, whether I'm here, here, this, this, or this. Exactly. Um, and so I love that. Your purpose fuels your profession. I'm writing it down, folks, because that's a nugget. The thing, the thing about it, though, is, and, and again, this is when I talk about that, I've gotten to that point in life where I like me. Mm -hmm. You have to get to a space where you let that happen. Yeah. Because so often I think about, uh, I mean, you know, my journey coming from a, a, a assistant account executive in, in advertising years right. ago, right. you know, it was like, Hey, I want to show you how I can do this. And mm -hmm. I want to learn how you do it and do it. And all those things are necessary. You know, right. you can't connect the dots until you look back at them. Sure. Um, sure. But in that space, you're trying to prove yourself or you're trying to be what other people want you to be. Not that they told you to. Right but you think that's what's expected of you. Yeah. And then when you finally get to this, this place of being confident and comfortable in who you are, you see the shift and it's different now. Yeah. 
you know, it's it's really about letting letting those natural passions and, and what your purpose in life is show itself. If I was a janitor, if I worked at the plant, if whatever, right. to your point, those same things that I am is what would come out of that. So yeah. So you mentioned kind of your your story about you know being like an ad exec and then making this on the account business side and then yeah. knowing now that you're a creative director. So tell us a little bit about that journey in the sense of <laughs> when you're thinking back and you start your career, hindsight was always 2020. And you know, when you're 20, you're <laughs> trying to get this check, but right. um but when you think back and you were, when you were thinking back to when you were 20 something and you were like, this is what I need to be doing to get to here. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what your expected journey was versus what your actual journey was starting there. And then I have some questions following. Oh, wow. Okay. I hope you got a whole lot of time. <laughs> no, um, it's funny you say that because I, I think about, you know, my life and none of it everything i've ever wanted and desired mm -hmm. has presented itself but none of it showed up the way i thought it was going to show up um you know for the longest time as a little kid you know i wanted to be in i first i thought i wanted to be an anime i knew i wanted to do something creative and in arts and all this other stuff um fast forward here i am in college and i'm working for a bank and yeah, I'm making money, a little bit of money, but that's not what I wanted to do. So it was like, okay, I got to get out of here. Right. And I was just searching, 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 searching. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to work one day or about to leave out and the phone rang. This is before I had a cell phone. <laughs> but the phone rang. I run back in the house, answer the phone, and it's for an interview for an ad agency. Okay. Um, and I take this interview and it was everything I thought I wanted yeah. at the moment. Um and got the job, let make a long story short, I'm making a little bit of money, I'm, I'm having fun, I'm learning the ad business. But even in that, mm -hmm. here I am on the account side, my desire was creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've always had this, um, I don't know, mantra or, or uh, statement I use, you know, if you can't swim in the pool, mm -hmm. stand as close to it as you can. Nice. Because either somebody gonna splash some water on you or they're playing around, knock you into the water. Right, right. Um, so in that, you know, I um, I was just anytime there was any kind of creative meeting, anything, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to hear what was going on in those rooms. Um, and I was just trying, trying, trying and sharing suggestions when nobody asked and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it finally got to the space where the uh, account director at the time reached out to our home office uh, and really expressed to them how serious I was about this. And they had agreed to make basically an intern position in the creative department. So I couldn't make any more money. I wasn't getting promoted or anything. It was just a semi kind of lateral move yeah. into the creative department. And I had to leave town to do that. Um, and at, I technically would have been leaving my now wife yeah. back in Michigan to do that. And we had this whole conversation. And I'm like, hey, if it's meant to be, we'll work it out. But I got to go chase this dream. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward, uh, when it was you know, time to really put things in motion, I get called into the director's office and she says, hey, the needs of the business have changed and we need you to stay on the account side. So I'm semi-crushed, right? I'm like, oh, my dreams of creative is over. <laughs> like, right. um, and in that moment, you know, God says a, a delay is not a denial. Mm -hmm. It's just a delay. Yeah. Um, and I'm so glad as I look fast forward for that delay, because while it may have slowed down my approach to creative, what it did do was build my business acumen. Nice. So now as a creative lead, I'm focusing on solving business problems. Yeah. And being creative for creative sake, being creative for creative sake doesn't help anybody. Right. But creatively solving problems. Mm -hmm. Is where I needed to be, and that what that's what gave me the niche, uh, just in the space that I that I'm in. Yeah. Um. So where was that? So they canceled the whole creative thing. I stayed on the account side. Then the client was like, "Hey, this is a few years after that now." The client's like, "Hey, we really like you over here. 
So then I get on the other side of the table. Now I'm working for my client, yeah. leading the agency that I just left um, and continue to build from there. But even in that, my desire was creative. So here I am now with this large company and it's like, how can I be a part of creative? That meant I had to move. Yeah. And you know, you're going through the whole process and everybody's supporting your dreams and all this stuff. At least that's what you're hearing. Oh. You know, we we want you to do what you what you want to do, and blah, blah, blah. So I decided, you know, to make a move uh, to the home office for this company. And, you know, I was working not in creative, but again, I had to work with the creative departments and team up with the agencies and stuff. And I kind of, in a sense, started over with just trying to be in that space, let people know what my desires were. I had also went back to school. I forgot about that part, but went back to school for design and things um, and was just building my personal portfolio, working with independent clients and stuff like that. Um, but just really trying to, you know, make my mark. And um, it wasn't happening the way I thought it should. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody was, it was, it was like, yeah, we want to help you get there. Right. But it just never was seeming to work that way. It was like, right. the more I pushed, the more people kind of backed up. Right. Um, but, you know, looking in retrospect, again, what God was doing was building my personal confidence, yep. seeing how bad I really wanted that. Um, and pushing me, you know, to do what I needed to do on my own outside of what I thought was the path I was supposed to take. Right. And, you know, fast forward, I had another opportunity to leave and then uh, go to Houston, where I am now, yeah. um, for a creative director role. And what was unique about it is it was a brand and creative role. Okay. And what made it work to the point that I was speaking about earlier is I had all this brand experience from the business side yeah. and understanding the needs of brands, yep. understanding what the business goals were. Yep. And then because of my creative um, studies and personal training and working with agencies and things, I had that to then put together okay. to now be this, you know, strategic creative problem solver. Right. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's, it was kind of a full circle moment like hey and even still you know you have those moments of oh well i'm not winning the awards with the big guys or whatever but it's like listen what are you doing man like you asked god to give you something and he gave it to you <laughs> and when i sit and i look around i'm like wait a minute <laughs> am i am i really here is this is this what i'm doing wow um when you were talking um so many things from my mind so i have to capture things as, as we go i guess the first one was when you were just talking about how, one, when you were at the ad agency sitting in meetings, you were like, I'm, I want my voice to be heard. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. One, because I'm asking questions, I'm gaining knowledge, right? Then we progress on to like what we think is going to be like, oh, this is it. And yeah. it wasn't quite that. But you were like, okay, we're going to take this time and figure out, one, maybe go back to school for, for what I know I see in my future. And then two, learn what I can in that space. Mm -hmm. And you said a line of like, it's just it, how it happened for you is just one part of your, your willingness to look at these opportunities as growth opportunities versus setbacks. Right. And it made me, so here, everybody knows on this podcast, like I'm not here to get churchy, but it's in my vein. So I'm gonna go there. But it reminded me of the verse, uh, Proverbs 18, 16, where it says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. Absolutely. It reminds me of like that, the whole story that you gave. It reminded me of two things. The first, <laughs> the first one was that verse, because it's like when your gift is, is sharpened like that, it does make room. It's yeah. not a dormant situation and waiting is not a passive verb, right? It's actually an active verb. It's a, it Absolutely. might be time, but it's active. It's like, okay, so then this is meant for me to learn this, or, you know, what? I have this season where this is a really good time for me to go back to school and all that. So I love that, that visual picture of that verse coming to life. Mm -hmm. And then um, it also reminds me, and I'm not a theologian, so there's that, but it reminds me of. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there real quick. What, okay. is, what is the theologian? Do you know God? I do. And I know his word. Trust, but I make it. One disciple. Do you, <laughs> do, do you trust God? I do. Oh well, we not we not worried about if you happen to say the verb right or quote the yeah. exact line. Listen, the word is in us all, and all we have to do is access it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what it is to one be taught really quick and be happy with where you are. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and tell the story because I, I had a similar experience of, like you were saying, of feeling like I'm doing work, I'm it's work I'm proud of. I don't feel like it's purposeful, but I see, like I knew what I wanted to be in, didn't know how God was gonna work that out. Like mm -hmm. I can, I can write a plan. And so I heard, um, when I first moved to Chicago, I heard this whole message about, um, I believe it was Peter. So that's what we're gonna go with. Okay. Um, and at the time, you know, he was a fisherman and obviously that was a great profession for that, that time frame. Um, he had a big boat. So this is an affluent person in that industry, a fisherman. And then he had this like dry spell of like, man, I'm not catching fish. That's not what's up. And so that's when he has this encounter with Jesus who was like, hey, cast your net to the other side. And when he dropped it, he like caught all this fish and he was like, oh, oh my God, I'm thriving now. And I mean, when I look back at my career, I had those moments like, I know what I'm doing. I'm hitting this drought. And then like, you have this blessing moment in your career, like, oh my God, I'm winning. And then like, then Jesus tells Peter like, okay, so now leave the boat, leave the net, leave all of that behind. And I can only imagine as a human being like, but fam, like you, now I'm driving. Like that was the answer. I had to drive, now I'm driving. And he was like, yeah, all of that was so you understood how to be fishers of men. I know that okay. you felt like this was your purpose, exactly. but it was the, it was, hold on, let me get it right. It was the, that purposeful fuel that drive the profession, or the, the profession was a piece of it, but your purpose behind it was the fuel to understand, like, I just need you to get the concept to right. be fishers of men, even right. though you felt like this whole career was about that. And I remember that resonating right. so much with me because I was like, there was a moment even in my current profession, um, in, in the in a ministry space, of feeling. Let, and let me be super transparent. Like, yeah, like when you are very corporate, you are like, is this the right move for me? What does this look like? And I had that moment of being like, no, all of that had purpose. That's not where I was taking it, but I needed you to get this get these um, foundational understandings before I moved you, before I told you to leave it. Absolutely. Like leave it, leave it. Like, oh snap. So we resume shifting, got it, okay. So, um, but yeah, I, I thank you for sharing that story. Cause I, I one, I, that it kind of just reminded me of all of that. And sometimes you can step away cause you're just in the thick of running. But yeah, that, 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 that was so on brand of, <laughs> On brand. No, something that 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 I've learned um, in these forty-one years is God will never. Mm. And I I can I might be wrong, but I ha I haven't proven myself wrong yet. God will never set you back. Listen, ever, ever. Yeah. you you can set yourself back. Right. He will never set you back. Now he might leave you where you are. Yeah. Yeah. But you never go backwards with God. If you follow yeah. His direction, you never go backwards. That's so good. You'll do some crazy stuff and sit yourself back and be like, man, nah, God will just leave you where you are or he will catapult the crap out of you. Yeah. I needed this whole word on today. I mean, we're going to get back to this podcast, but listen. This is what this is. If, if it ain't this, it ain't worth it. I listen. I love that. That is so good. That's such a good reminder too. Um, and, and also it's like, it's my perception sometimes of moving back when it could be, to your point, it could be that move could be a catapult forward, even though to me, it feels like a setback. And so that reminder is so awesome. I appreciate that for sure. For sure. Um, oh, what else did you say? It was something else. If I can't think about it, I will. Oh yes, you talked about when you when you took this job at the headquarters feeling like, am I starting back over? What kind of feelings did that evoke? Because I, I know that it can, when you do feel like you're going ahead, and you get into a space coming off of that word you just gave, because that's, that was powerful. But like, what kind of mindset, what did, you, what did you have to stay in a space of to know like, this is not that setback or this isn't, even though it feels like, wait, I'm back at square two at least. Right. What did you do to kind of encourage yourself? What, what were your inner thoughts, your inner um, motivators? So, I know you said this isn't, you know, we ain't a church, but oh, we here churches, for church, churches is everywhere to me, right? right. Um, man, it was, it was, it was trusting God. I, I'm sorry. I, so part of my brand, is, yeah. no, I'm not going to say that. Not part of my brand. 
who I am. Yeah, yeah. Like this isn't I created this. For who sure. I was born yeah. is a very uh, faithful person. Mm-hmm. So you know my my you know my personal creative thing was always eleven one creative, and that's from Hebrews eleven one. Yes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yes. I am that. That is the epitome of me. I yes. am. I believe what people just don't. I don't know how to tell you no different. Awesome. Um, so for me, while it had its days of like, oh man, here we go. I just believed. All right. I'm, I'm here, right? It, it was almost like, I, I liken it to, you know, when I was in college and I pledged, it was like, you know, the first time I went to an information session and somebody, you know, hazing is illegal. Yes. Just for the record. But the first time somebody said something crazy to me, I'll put it like that. Right. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, I'm a noob. It's just going to take a couple, <laughs> a little time. Right, right. Like I was already it, you know what I mean? Yes. So I, I wholeheartedly believe in the things that God puts in my mind they exist. I just have to be patient to see them. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't say that, you know, for anybody listening, that's not like, oh, it's just super easy. Heck no. I'm waiting on some stuff right now. And I'm like, what are we doing, Lord? Right, right. Um, but I, I genuinely believe that he put them in my mind for a reason. Mm-hmm. I'm not going around making stuff up. I, 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 whether it was a dream, whether it was just the Holy Spirit saying, "Hey, this is for you," right, um, or move in this direction. I listen to that very intently mm-hmm. and just go. Yeah. And in that process, I've had people. I mean, even you know, there's stories with my wife and how we moved to Chicago to Houston that I could tell you, and just stuff where it was like she might not have saw it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I saw something and she trusted me enough to follow and I trusted her to follow, you know? So it's, it's this constant, um, it's a constant moving process, Yeah. but you got to believe somewhere because if you don't, then what's the point, right? It's, it's just like with praying. Why, what's the point of praying if you're not believing what you're praying about? Right. <laughs> if you're not believing God can fix it, you should be quiet. Listen. <laughs> like stop. Right, right. And I'm a praying God. Pray for real. I mean, pray. Yeah. Now I'm not saying God saying be stupid. You know, pray if I walk out here and in this fire, I'm not gonna burn up. Correct. With but understand if He told you to walk in there, totally. It might be a kid that you can grab right on the other side of that fire and walk away or something. Something was needed. Yeah. Yeah. So just pay attention to to what your spirit tells you to do. Yeah. Yeah, this is so on time. It's almost creepy, but it's not because it's it's on time. So there you go. Um, okay, and so that is the mindset that you have, which is is it's super healthy, and it and it does take that faith mindset. Um, because we're in this space of people in a season. I mean, myself included, and and you mentioned it too. Like, okay, God, what's good? Because I am praying, you know, whatever. But walk us through a a time to whatever level capacity or story you want where you felt like you were in that rough valley or situation and you remember thinking like maybe because it's taking so much maybe this isn't for me or maybe it wasn't for me or and then and then what that what is that story how did it end up happening and um and and i'm saying this because you you told us that it's it's faith but I want you to walk someone through that story who is like, I I can get to that faith space, but I want to just be vulnerable that it's not rainbows and skittles the whole way through. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So every every portion of my life has been like that, right? Yeah. Like it sounds really good, but everything I can think of, there's a story behind it. Um, what's a good one though? Um, Mm. Uh, I mean, take your time. It's real. No, I, I'm, 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 <laughs> it's, it's so hard to look at them as valleys. I'm sorry. It's, it's a, it's a Which challenge. Crazy. It, right. Looking back, looking back, right. Going through it. I was tripping. Heavily orchestrated. <laughs> right. Um, Hmm. 
And while you're thinking about it, I say it, I say it to say it is, it is so awesome when you have those moments and you can look back and see like, God, I see every moment and yeah. how you orchestrated it. But then for those who are in that moment, this, you're not, this is not a silo situation for them. You are not the first person to go through this or whatever, whatever it is you're going through. Right. So the feelings that you feel are, are real at the time and you're not making this pain up and no, I don't, faith is real. God gives us his word, but no, I don't, you know, for the sake of not hitting you upside the head with the verse, like you can do all things like you can. But but this is the journey. It genuinely, it, it this is this is the journey. It's the journey. No, I, so and I guess I don't know. The, the quickest thing that comes to mind is part of the story I told about going from the agency to you know to the to the client or not. To, I'm sorry, going from the client to home office to be yeah. closer to the creative team. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I'm 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 there or I'm I'm working for this company and. I don't went back to school and here I am doing all this design work and, you know, and I had growing to do what we all have growing to do. I get better every day. And I'm like, Ooh, I, used, I did that. <laughs> you know? um, but, you know, here I went back to school. Now I got this degree in design. I'm all excited about that. I don't put all this work in this, this passion in me has been fueled. Um, and I'm showing, you know, these uh, executive creative directors, executive creative officers and stuff my portfolio and they're looking at me like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> they're like, all right. Right. And like, dude, you you you're too far in your career yeah. to to do this. Why do you want to do this now? I remember I went to uh the executive creative director of one of the agencies that we worked with and really expressed, hey, you know, what would it take for me to come to this side of the table? And and, and you know, he said, you know, you have potential. But he said, at the end of the day, he said, look at where you are in your career. He said, I'd have to pay you a lot less than you make right now. Yeah. To have a job in creative. Yeah. And he was like, and it was, it was weird because here I am saying, I just want to be in this world that you're in, mm -hmm. but he's looking at my finances. Yeah. He doesn't know if I'm some spoiled rich kid or nothing. He's just like, listen, I know about what you make over here and I'm gonna have to pay you half of that to come over here. He didn't ask me, are you willing to take a pay cut? Nothing. It was just <laughs> oh, wrote his own story. Right. He wrote his own story. Um, and then even in that, it put me in this space of, OK, I am making you know, what I make. And now I had, you know, at this point, I had a, a wife, a mortgage and two kids. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it was like, man, you know, can I take a step back? Right. Is it even a step back? But again, that's why you got to be patient. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Yeah, uh Aha! Uh right. um, you know, so it was, I was just, I was really going through it. I was just kind of, you know, I felt inadequate. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, nobody's hearing me and all these people are feeding me lines and, you know, they don't, they're not really vested in my career and what I want to do, you know, and, right. and don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't even want to say that because people were helping me in the space that I was in. Um, but that's not where I wanted to be. And I'm like, where, you know, people ain't looking out, people ain't blah, blah, blah. And it leads me, it's funny because I made a post uh, not too long ago and I said, um, I can't quote this verbatim, but I said something around the fact, stop complaining and worrying about who's supporting you and looking out for you. Mm. I said, um, do what you need to do so that when they're in rooms that you don't have access to, they have something to talk about. Yes. That's good. And God gave me, you know, uh, God and mentors of mine, I, I, you know, the, the, the word of listen, be really great at what you do. Yeah. You know, you can talk about your other dreams and aspirations, but be great at what you do. You know, God says, be faithful over the little things and he'll make you master over many. So it's, I didn't quote that perfectly, but you, you get the point. Yeah. You know, it, it was, it was really about, you know, focus on where I am do the best in that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then do my other thing as well. Yes. So at the end of the day, the thing that, that I'm there to do, people are looking at and they're saying, okay, he's solid. Right. Because yeah. it's not even, when you think about it, it's not even so much about the job you're doing. It's the responsibility of the job you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, we talk about going to college, right? It's not, college isn't so much about the education. It's about the ability to complete something 
absolutely the ability to manage business and relationships in a controlled environment mm -hmm. um so it's, it's the same thing in, in on a workplace so you know i had to kind of refocus myself and just say hey do the absolute best with what i got right now right right and that absolute best helps people see okay he's he's doing that where else are we going to take him and then comes the discussion of all right well he doesn't want to do this he wants to do this mm -hmm. and are we willing to support that and help that yeah you know so and then you know fast forward from there when i left that company they threw a party for me wow they were excited and like oh my god you know you can always come back and grant it and this is why you listen to god six months after i left they had a reorg wow and everything changed here i had a party a go away party mm -hmm. but then six months later people are reaching out to me like hey you got any connections because right everything went south over here mm -hmm. you know so you know god's timing and and i at that point now i'm in the space yes. that i wanted to be yes. in but god's timing is god's timing and we can't if you're going to believe you got to believe listen you can't second guess them. And, I, and I, I, I hope anybody who's listening don't think that I'm taking their feelings or, or, or things for granted, but it's, it's as simple as things that you, things will happen when you are, when you believe they will and you're ready to receive them. Good. Like you have to, you know, you might want to be married when you 13 years old, but what kind of mother or, or husband you going to be or wife you going to be at 13? Right. You don't know anything yet, right? But now, once I hit 26, 30, you know, I'm in this space now. Of, okay, I lived a little bit and I'm willing and ready to build something with someone. Right, right. Everything takes time. Yeah. yeah. And, and realizing that, I mean, I've, I've said this in a couple episodes, but realizing that your time is on time. It absolutely is. Which actually is a great segue into the next question I have, because I know it's something that like, it's human of of really just thinking about mm -hmm. like and when you're going through those valleys or peaks or whatever it is why is it so important not to fall that which is so easily done why is it so important not to fall into a comparison mindset because essentially we are we're, uh -huh. we're constantly measuring ourselves on where we should be and that's yep. So, so constructed based off where other people are, what other people said you should have, what society says you should have to be successful. So all of that in your space, holding mm -hmm. onto that faith and knowing that God's timing is perfect and it's on time for you. Why is it so important not to, to, to really focus on snapping out of that mind, that comparative mindset? Look, I just had this conversation recently with somebody. If you compare yourself ever, stop immediately. Mm -hmm just for the fact of that's not you yeah that's not your situation that timing isn't your timing yeah. and you don't know what's going on over there but like, you have no like if you can if i compare myself to anything i will lose you will always lose yeah. yeah because at the end of the day there's always somebody better than you and somebody worse than you yeah and that even shifts over time that person that was worse than you may be better than you tomorrow yeah like, do not, do not, do not, do not compare yourself. It's first off, it's a waste of energy. Yeah. That you could be putting on the thing that you're trying to be good at. Right. Second off, why are you, I mean, you, you look at, you know, you look at all these singers, right? There are plenty of singers who are amazing and could blow, you know, I hope I don't get called blasphemy, but could blow Beyonce or, or, or my girl Jasmine Sullivan out the water. I don't know but about that, but I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Jazz, that's my girl. Um, but at the end of the day, she's where she is right. because she put in the work to be there. It's her time to be there. And there was a time I'm sure where she was somebody's background singer. Absolutely. And she had to learn, you know, she had to learn the business. She had to learn where in the business she wanted to be. Yeah. Like when you, when you think about, um, just comparing yourself, it just, it, it's not, it's not a good place because again, everybody, everybody's version of success is completely different. Right, right. You know, you you might think, hey, what did, what did you say? More money, more problems. Right. You know, you might think you want a million dollars and this that, but if you can't handle a thousand, a million is gonna hurt you bad. Right. 
You know what I mean? I, I listened to a, a sermon the other day, as a matter of fact, uh, matter, um, it was T.D. Jakes, mm -hmm. but he was talking about more mm -hmm. and, and, and God's promise of more. Mm -hmm. But he said very clearly, with more comes more. Right. So the bigger house you get, the bigger uh, light bill you got. Right. <laughs> the more grass you got to cut. You know what I mean? So you looking down the street and you're like, hey, they got this big, huge house. All right, you can get that. But if I get you that house, yeah. but you don't know anything yeah. about maintaining an apartment, Listen. you're going to lose that house. Yep. And that's where, to the point earlier, that's when we set ourselves back. Yeah, yeah. Because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, as they say, or you're trying to grab onto things without knowing what went into them. You know, it's the same. <laughs> I joked with uh, my brother-in-law the other day about this. I said, everybody wants to be Fetty Wap. Nobody wants to lose an eye. Listen. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? No like thinking about that. They only see this current place. They see the current place. And and that's, you know, we and, and that's the that's the sad part I see about like social media and stuff. And I, I'm so glad like I live in between those worlds. It's like you look and it's like as a photographer, for instance. Mm -hmm. So I shoot pictures and I'd say I do pretty good work. Right. But you didn't know that one picture that you love so much, it was 20 others that were trash that I threw away. Totally. Totally. You know totally. what I mean? So if you're comparing yourself to me as a photographer saying, oh, I want to shoot like that. Well, you don't know how long it took me to get that one picture. Right. Are you willing to do that work? Okay. Invest in the camera? Because it was. Right. Are you? It wasn't There's a, a lot to that. I got $10,000 of camera equipment in right. here. Like, wait a minute. It was lighting and equipment to go along with it. You know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things of, of understanding, and, and, and let, me, let me throw this in there as a small caveat. There is healthy um, awareness yeah. of what goes on. So when I think about my career, I have a group of friends that we've always tracked ourselves against each other. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we all graduated around the same time and it's like, oh, you got a promotion. I should be thinking about a promotion or you're doing this and or I want to do this. And we, we did that just to benchmark each other to see what the 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 industry and the environment was like. Yes, yes. But I couldn't say I wanted to do what my boy does. Right. You know, I got a partner right now. Uh, his name is Al Bettis. He's an amazing musician. Yeah. This guy at 30 years old decided at 30. Now, granted, he went to school for MIS and, and right. he was running a plant and doing IT for Volkswagen and Audi and all this other stuff. And at 30 years old, he's like, you know what? I want to play guitar and sing. Mm. Fast forward 10 years later, he's doing concerts all over the place. Yeah. You know, he has folks like Jason Emeraz talking to him. He's uh, an ambassador with Taylor Guitars. I mean, but these are things, and we literally have conversations now right. where, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me sharing this, he's comparing himself to other artists. Right. And he's like, man, I'm just trying to get there. And I said, dude, five, you know, five years ago, you were trying to just be here. Right, right. And look where you are. You didn't even, you didn't necessarily think this would happen. Right. You know what I mean? So, so to be doing something, finding that passion mm -hmm. and that purpose and letting that drive you, it'll take you places you don't think you're supposed to be. You know, he was sitting in a room with folks that he said, all these wonderful, well-known musicians. And I said, and guess who was sitting in the room with them? Right. They're all saying, I'm in a room of well-known musicians. You're yes. sitting in that room. Yes. So understand who you are, trust where God has you, Yes. and know why you're there. Yeah. Like you're, you're there because you've earned it. You're there because God loved you enough and agreed with what you wanted. That's good. Because if he don't agree with it, it ain't happening. Right. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. true. It's so true. Um, 